People really think that writing code is the problem. No, that's not the problem. The problem is actually divided into two subsets of the problem. The first one being finding the engineering solution. Code, we can figure out, we can write it. But finding the engineering solution requires an engineering brain and to do something which was never being done in the past and find out a groundbreaking technology to actually solve that engineering problem. Another side of the problem is we are not clear what we really want to do. Sometimes the requirements are not clear either from the manager or from the client side. It's really a vague requirement and engineers need much more precision than that. Or if I'm building something on my own, sometimes even I don't know what I'm trying to build. It's a vague suggestion. I know vague path of it, but as the feedback comes from the client or the users of the project, then I really could figure out and find out and shape the project in the direction I really want to shape. So let me know in the comment section, what do you think is your favorite problem or what do you think is a bigger problem? Is the engineering side of the problem or having the requirement side of the problem? Because we are going to talk about the AI side of the things in this video. And full disclosure, for this particular video, I actually went ahead and bought a couple of AI tools from my own money and wanted to try them out, test them out and see the pros and cons on my own. And yes, there are two variants of these code suggestion tools. I'll walk you through which one is my favorite and turns out it was all free. And yes, I did bought a couple of others then. They are also equally good, but I, I found the free one much better. And I found a couple of other use cases and that's why I'm asking all the team, hey, go ahead and let's uh, install this in each one of the computers so that we can see, uh, we'll, we'll discuss about that. But first, let me show you what are the two different segments that you really need to be aware of all the on the AI side of the thing. So let me share the screen and uh, let's discuss that on our favorite Excalibur. So as you know, there are lots of code suggestion instrument these days uh, from GitHub Copilot, which actually suggests you the things and similar kind of a breed. Uh, I'll just like to call them as with a separate section. So uh, the first one that we go ahead and work with this is, uh, oops, uh, first one is uh, suggestions. So these are the ones which actually provides you the suggestion while writing the code. While on the other hand, these are the ones which are really fancy one. Let's call them as really fancy because these are the breed of tools which says we'll do everything for you. You just give us a prompt. We'll, we'll change multiple code files in your code base or we'll deploy the entire thing or we're going to generate the whole front end for you back. Th these are fancy ones. And let me also walk you through that there is a lot of people who like these kinds of tools. There are a lot of people who don't like the tool and we're going to get with all of them. So it's important that first of all, we draw a line between them because yes, there is a big line of separation between each one of them. Now, first of all, let's also categorize the people who are in the both side of the categories as well. They are not the side of the categories, but hey, there are still categories of people who are there. So the first one here, if I go back here, so the first one that you're going to see are really the beginners beginners as well as uh, I would say non-coders. Yeah, that would also be a good term. So known non-coders and we're going to keep them because this is a separate discussion altogether. So we're going to keep these ones here, uh, beginners as well as the known non-coders. And then there are ones which are intermediate, mediate, if I read, wrote that correctly, intermediate, as well as the pros. So there is a really vast requirement by each subset of the guys. Let me show you. The beginners and the known coders, they are really easy to impress. The moment you show them some fancy demo like Devin or a similar kind of a tool, they get really, really impressed with that. And they just goes all crazy on the Twitter that, you know what, this is the tool, this is the thing. Probably the all coding jobs are gonna be gone and they will do everything for us and whatnot. Same kind of a people exist in the designer realms as well. They think that, hey, designer job is gone and now Figma will do everything with the AI and all of that. So they are much more mesmerized with these fancy tools. While on the other hand, if we go ahead and check out with these intermediate and the pro level, they're not that impressed with the AI. They think that AI is just kind of a fad. We are really not that interested in it. We just simply want to have a tool which helps us in writing code. Nothing more, nothing less. We don't want these fancy dramas. In fact, some of the people you're going to find that when it takes a little bit time for the code suggestion, they are annoyed by that. That, hey, it, it's stopping my creativity. I can write it faster. And that's a good thing because they are in the Zen mode. Now, what I tend to like is in the suggestion based tool. I don't want the fancy tool just for having a drop down or change the button color. I don't want to write a prompt that, hey, do this and move this button here and all of that. I can do this faster because I understand my code base. So I 
prefer to have these kinds of tools which are code suggestion. Now, with a big fact that I haven't tried these fancy tools much yet, I did invest it majorly on the suggestion one. So we're going to go on to this side of the part. Now here, you're going to see a lot of new startups are there, a lot of uh, old uh, companies are there. For example, the GitHub is also in the race and there are lots of people in this race. Now it turns out who started the race, GitHub, is not leading the race. Yeah, that, that's a very surprising fact. There are other tools which are doing far better than GitHub Copilot and their suggestions is much better and their code predictability is much better. And even some of them offer that, hey, if you don't want us to train our model on your code base, you can go ahead and control that. And this is where I try to find out that what more tool I can find out and that can actually help me to write better code. And in case if you have seen my uh, recent backend videos, I was actually trying to take help from uh, different uh, tools. One of the tools that I used in this entire series is the Codium. We'll talk about that, why I preferred and like that. If you'll notice here, especially in the series where we, where we were writing the controllers, if I go into this controller part, uh, we noticed that once we wrote this kind of a generate access refresh token, a lot of suggestions or when help were given to me by just understanding what style of code I write. Not based on, hey, I was trained on thousand other pieces of code that was there, but most of the time it adapted the pattern I write. And I was getting a longer suggestion, not too long that I have to hit the tab and it just does everything for me because I don't want that. I want to teach people, I want to write the code on my own, but if I just go ahead and write enough that it gives me enough that it is okay to use, it almost feels like an intelligence suggestion, but on a longer format. And that's exactly what I want because it makes me much more productive. And for that, I went into the Codium and I try to use it. And you notice here, it's always there. I usually don't keep it up here because I don't use anything in here. I actually go ahead and, but mostly I don't use any of them because there is no requirement of this. It does automatically the things for me and I just install it and forget it. And I feel like I have a coding assistant, which is on steroid. The best part which I liked about this is this whole completion because by the way, I'm pretty sure some of you are looking for the pricing section. It is free for every single developer. You can go ahead and use it. There is no such extra recharge that you have to do. There is no extra payment that you have to do. No monthly payment, nothing like that, that you have to do. It just gives you auto completion with a rapid speed. And that's what I like. Another thing which I like about them is uh, no training on non-permissive data. So yeah, and encrypt in the transit. So nothing happens to your data. And what I also like about them is a different approach, which actually makes me a little bit productive. If I go ahead and check out their profile, this is my fun part and this is the favorite one. And if you notice here, I've been doing this experiment of finding out which one is good. And again, for months, and I started this one on 27 July and started working on it rigorously there. And of course, because I tested and tried others as well, that's why you see that there are only 351 completion. Uh, and in the last day, five, seven days, I just came back from a travel. So that's why nothing much. But again, I can actually be productive and see how much actually I'm working on the code itself because I don't commit everything. So just finding the commit history, probably not good, but uh, this auto completion history really do tells me that, hey, how much I'm doing it, how much am I using it, and where am I using it? What are my top languages? Of course, JavaScript, TypeScript, this is the one where I have been, and Python, of course. So this is my tech stack, which I use it, and it gives you analytics as well. Now, what's really nice is if you are in a team section and your company wants to buy it, they can actually have an admin dashboard and can figure out the performance of each user. And these performance are really helpful in the time of appraisal and all these things. So this is where I really like the part that it is free. It is anybody can try this out and can see that if it fits in your uh, regular day to day life activity or doesn't. For me, I just installed it and forgot it, that it is even there. And I started teaching with this almost all of my, not all, but last eight to nine videos or 10 videos in the backend series. Uh, yes, we have used it and nobody complained about it. That is my biggest uh, happy point that nobody actually came in and complained that, hey, this is too much of suggestion. We are not able to understand what you are teaching. They were able to understand it. I got the feedback on the Discord and I talked to some of the people that, hey, it's really nice suggestions. We understand what the suggestion is. It's not too long. It's not too short. It doesn't hinder the learning. It doesn't hinder in uh, your speed of writing the code as well. So that is it. Uh, that is my take. And again, there are others uh, such as well, but I prefer to use the Codium one because I think it's free. That is uh, really nice that for the individual developer, it's free and I install it and forget it. 
Again, if you are enjoying learning these kinds of content and these kinds of research videos, go ahead, hit that subscribe button because I keep on bringing such videos. Recently, we published a whole video about the deployment on the VPS. People loved it. And we also are almost going to finish our backend series as well. And we are going to see the tool uh, being used in it directly. So that is all uh, my take and my research of a couple of months that we started. Go ahead, try this out. I'll leave the link in the description section as well. It's free. Try this out. And let me know the feedback that did you like this tool? Uh, what are the features you liked about it? What are the features you didn't like about it? It's all open feedback. I would love to know more about it. That is it for this video and let's catch up in the next one.